Lovely to see some new faces this morning amongst the old friends. For those who, are, who weren't missed yesterday, we uh, spent most of the day dwelling on the wonderful simplicity of simple silence, not talking, merging into stillness and space. then into the sort of living space of presence and how to realize this it's most important for us to be present to be present in the present moment now and to help us do that we use the old uh, thing of feet on the ground, bottom on the chair. I'll repeat this until you're sick of it. <laughs> and listen <clears throat> and look. And to realize that although we, we may think we've got our feet on the ground and we're listening and looking, we usually, usually only do so at half cock, you know, just with a few percent of our attention. And the difference between looking with 5% attention and 100% attention is something we can hardly comprehend. I suspect if any of us were really fully present, we'd probably explode. Can you imagine it, what it is to be fully present? Well, perhaps we cannot, but as far as you can, just try, try to feel your feet on the ground. Just wiggle your toes and just engage with the fact that these things on the ground are, they've got senses. Feel the sense that they're there at the end of your legs, touching the ground. And the ground is actually still, isn't it? So to feel your feet on the ground is really instant peace, isn't it? In the busiest of circumstances, feet on the ground brings you to instant constancy, peace, and many other lovely qualities connected with that. Stability, reassurance. In a changing world, something that doesn't change. Timeless. Just feet on the ground. Well, and then growing up from that into silence, stillness, space, presence. Again, all this can be sharpened up greatly by looking and listening. So the church bells are there sounding in stillness, aren't they? In silence. And the whole of Cork is held in perfect silence, perfect peace, as are all of us here. 20, 30 different people all held in this one presence. And from presence we can expand to spirit, for what is spirit? What is presence? We can't say, can we? Nobody knows what it is, and yet it's obvious, isn't it? We can't attach words to it, really. You can't describe it, and yet it's the most evident thing there is.
stillness, presence, presence of one spirit, freedom, what's that? Peace. Oh, to be at peace, we say. The whole world crying out for peace. It couldn't be. How can we not be at peace? Except we are not, except we are absent, we're not present. And from there we expanded yet further into uh, the utter simplicity of, uh, of what, dear? Of what is beyond words, what we might call God, the love of God. Wasn't this same quality also love? When we look at each other, isn't that what flows between us? And it's love without complications, isn't it? Without possessiveness, without the sort of exclusiveness of I love you. It's rather a matter of being in love, isn't it? And here, amazingly, the sort of bad seems to melt away, doesn't it? As though it isn't present. What is it anyway? Where are the problems? Well, it's here we're held in this uh, this wonder, really, of presence. Then we've all been away, we've been back in the world again, we've sort of erupted back into talking and and separation, and no doubt all the problems of of life have re-emerged again. We've forgotten. I wonder how much of the time between when we all said but good night last night and this morning we've actually been present at all or have we <laughs> spent the night more or less absent <coughs> but this is the human condition generally absent isn't it absent from the presence of God and so this is the world and um, what we might call the work work with a capital W is just coming back to being present. So almost unbelievably simple. <laughs> well, yes, that's a bit of a rehearsal of what we were dealing with yesterday. And if any of you want to uh, raise anything, any questions or anything you'd like to say about it, please do so. Because that's very helpful to me because it then gives me a theme to, to uh, talk about. Yes, this thing of it, attention. <coughs> The how much attention do we apply to these things? You see, we're held now, and you're all more or less. We haven't we fall, fallen away from it? That bit of presence, we're not quite there, are we? See how subtly we fall away. Um, so let's come back to being a little bit more feet on the ground again. Bottom on the chair. Just feel your weight on the cushion, <coughs> the chair supporting you. Listen. Listening is amazing, isn't it? If you listen, if you really listen, listening tends to expand, doesn't it? 
Whatever you can hear, listen beyond it, beyond my voice. Listen there. Listen to the grass growing. And the far horizon. Over the hills and far away. Listen, listen. You'll find the whole world is contained in listening. To all the thoughts, the talking, all the action, the movement is held in this listening. And listening is completely effortless, isn't it? See, what is necessary, well, your eardrums are functioning, but that's functioning within a... Within a, within, a, within a greater listening, isn't it? Beyond and beyond and beyond. Where does it end? Perhaps it has no end. Listening. Hear the angels singing. And beyond that too. Try looking. Just look. Look whatever you're looking at. When you look from great stillness, it becomes ever more wonderful, doesn't it, what you see? I can see all your faces, you can only see mine, but look at it all the same. It's an extraordinary, wonderful thing. The eyes that are looking back at you. And beyond the eyes, look into the eyes and beyond the eyes, into the infinite. Unlimited. the ocean. Listening and looking opens up a whole new world of wonder, doesn't it? To listen and look with, with it's all to do with attention. How much attention are we doing? Look, we normally just look, oh where's my stick? You know, it's just a the difference between that and actually looking as we've just been looking is a world apart, isn't it? How much attention can you give to something? Just do anything, just look at your fingers and there's your hands moving. See the total miracle of it. Talk about, uh, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the um, sorry, what's the book called? Course in Miracles. Course in Miracles, yes, well, here you are, my dears. A miracle of just being present. So, as part of this work, it's a very fundamental practice to be attentive and to practice being attentive to whatever we're doing. Is it just the ordinary housework? Or it's the few, few lucky ones among us who work with our hands, have an opportunity to practice working with attention. For example, just, you know, to pick up a stick, for example, and lean on a stick with attention. Even that can become something quite wonderful, can't it? The action of it. And it's all to do with the, with the amount of attention you give to it. The tension's a bit like a search for a torch. You can either have a little, weak little torch, you know, that shows a little bit, or a stronger torch. It's all to do with attention, how much attention you can gather to a point, and then the point becomes miraculous. Full attention. 
yesterday I was uh, on the day of the coronation I was telling telling the group about uh, meeting uh, Prince Charles as he then was I don't know if any how many of you have ever read, met any met him or any, had any dealings with the royal family but the, the miraculous quality of attention that man conveyed to me in a few minutes we were alone and talking together Un unforgettable When you meet someone with full attention, you remember, don't you? It's pretty wonderful just looking at each other now, isn't it? Something flows, something, something wonderful, isn't it? It's all to do with attention. So, my dears, there's there's nothing really more important I can suggest to you is just to try and brush up your attention, be more attentive. Really good practice. <clears throat> it doesn't mean to do anything fresh, you don't have to, it's just a matter of doing just what you do anyway. Try to do it connected. And the more you are attentive, you see, the, the less you're absent, the more you're present. And then this, this sequence of presence, and the more you're present, the deeper you, you, you emerge, merge into this ocean of presence, then you're in touch with the everlasting before your eyes, and the infinite potential of what is not there. What is not you know, emanating from this primal source as it was in the beginning. Do they say God is with us? Where is God? How can we be closer to God than here and now? God is present. God is a present help. Every other page in the Bible says, God is with us, God is present. Here and now, He is present, are we, but we are absent. And this really is the human condition, absence from the presence of God, which equals sin. Hence, our troubles. Yes, please bear in mind that I'm talking to you from my experience. So, take it with a pinch of salt, what I say. And others may not agree or have their own versions of it, but I tell you from my own experience. Um, <clears throat> almost everybody and uh, of course it was the same for me too. When we begin this work, all this is a bit inaccessible really. We may hear it with words, but they don't really connect. We're not there, we're too accustomed to being down here. Especially when we're young, we live in our bodies, don't we, the physical bodies. It's all dominant usually when we're young and then the, the mind begins to expand. Um, so it's almost impossible to, to get beyond the mind you know, to when we begin. And uh, so it's useful to begin with, if you can just observe or be aware of the thinking, be aware of the process of thinking. And if we're lucky enough to have a good system of meditation, you may get odd glimpses when you actually go, thinking seems to as it were, fade out and you're aware of, of just a space. Thinking gets less. That's really what mantra is, is, it just gives you an alternative to thinking and enables the consciousness to rise. As I like to illustrate it by like a little aeroplane going through the clouds, the clouds of the mind, the think thoughts of the mind. You know, once you get in an aeroplane, you look down and you can see the clouds, can't you? It doesn't matter what the clouds are doing, really, thick or thin. Or, the clouds are just clouds, aren't they? Well, 
if you're blessed enough to get glimpses of higher consciousness, you can look down and just see thoughts. That's just what they are. They're a layer of consciousness between, between this, where there are no thoughts, and, and there, where there are no thoughts, and here, a layer of thoughts. Um, so there are various ways of dealing with thoughts, and uh, attention is a very good way, because if you listen to something with full attention, then there's no more attention to give to the thoughts. You know, if I look at uh, he told me of the guy, I knew it, Mermaid, Mermaid, but Mermaid, Mermaid, the R, R in the middle, Mermaid. If I look at Mermaid, then I'm not looking at Rose, am I? And vice versa, if I look at Rose, I, I don't see Mermaid. So this is meditation, you see. In meditation, you just have an alternative to thinking. And by attending to that alternative, be it breathing or a mantra or something, then you've got no more attention for thoughts. So this is what this is exactly what meditation is. It's just a method of diverting attention from thinking, so that it can go beyond. Um, so what to do with thoughts? Basically, if you enjoy them, of course, you can spend the day thinking. Most people do. But if you're interested in this sort of work, then listening and looking, do you know what it is? Listening and looking and feeling your feet on the ground, what is it? It's using your senses. It's just common sense, isn't it? Simple common sense. Like I'm sure everybody, we've all been told as children, use your common sense. That's what it is. The most important spiritual practice is simple common sense. And then the mind's perfectly quiet, isn't it? Amazing. If any of you got a thought in your head, well, I bet you have a few, because they're, they're there sort of ticking away, but probably in the background, probably not completely dominant as they usually are. And if they're there in the background, well, so what? It doesn't matter. Thoughts are thoughts. They're perfectly valid. They're, they're, as uh, Tim said, they're, they're really like your tummy. You don't worry about your tummy digesting your breakfast, and you don't think about it. Also, the same with the mind. The mind is just digesting all the impressions floating around in the atmosphere, the news and everything. I find, think of it as a mental digestive system, doing its work. That's it. And um, by using your common sense, you don't bother about it. Sometimes it's, you know, it's rumbling a bit and disturbed. But People, I know people get terribly upset about their minds and try to control it, but it's very questionable either whether they can or whether you just out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> you know, if you try to <laughs> not to have bad thoughts, it's not so easy. They just pop up, don't they? From, but, um, it's a good idea to try to avoid being critical and, and, and judgment. Yes, certainly when, sorry, I'm talking from a rather advanced position perhaps, that, you know, talking very lightly about being beyond the mind, it's, it's no, no small achievement really to be able to dwell beyond the actions of the mind. 